finding your niche day three. This channel Jubilee is pretty cool because it asks controversial questions and it asks people to come up and give their comments, their opinions, maybe their suggestions and thoughts on what they think. This video is on rich versus poor. I've never been rich, but I've been poor and I've been middle class. I think there are advantages in terms of having economic value also for your mindset as well. When I was poor, is more limited mindset. Both of my parents, they're from Vietnam. They grew up at the start of the war. They moved to Syracuse, New York. That's how I was born. My daddy originally wanted to move to Australia, but he got rejected and they sent them to New York. My mother, she was telling me about uh, when she went to Malaysia, I think. It was one location where they sent all of the refugees there and she was saying how it was unhospitable there. I also remember my father telling me that uh, when he was trying to escape the country of Vietnam, he had some gold pieces on him and he got captured and they put him in a, a camp and they took all of his stuff. It's interesting that uh, war, it would divide families. It would change the course of your life essentially because I'm pretty sure I have family in China that I don't know them. I remember my mother saying that she tried to go back to China, not back to China. She was born in Vietnam. She went to China to try and find family members, but it was pretty hard to find them. But yeah, for sure, if you grew up poor, then you would go through these certain struggles with your mindset, maybe you would have a limited mindset. Whereas uh, when you get older, you try and push for a better life so that you don't have to live that kind of life when you're older. I like to try and invest in myself in terms of services or your behavior can tell someone else or yourself if you love yourself because I can't necessarily say, oh, I'm in love with myself, but the behaviors that I take, for example, if I'm taking care of myself properly, proper sleep, diet, uh, joining certain clubs or, or going to school, those kinds of things, it shows that you value yourself and where you want to go in life. It's good to, to invest in yourself, invest in courses or tools, things that you need, and not necessarily look at the price. Just say, for example, this tracker, I need it because I need it to try and fix my sleep. It tracks your stress, your calories that you burn, those kinds of things. It costs about $220. And to some people, that might be a lot of money, but if it's worth it to you to invest into those kinds of things, then why not? Because I'm pretty sure I went to university and I spent thousands of dollars. And I personally wouldn't go back to university if I had to redo it again because it's expensive. The information you learn, it's not, it's not valuable to me. Right now, uh, it's more for relationships. But I took some notes over here about this channel. You can agree with somebody and you can disagree with them. Obviously, everybody has their own beliefs. They came from different backgrounds. When you have disagreements, you can have respect or you cannot have respect. I was watching two people argue on the Fresh and Fit show and they were pretty insulting to each other. I personally don't like arguing. I would just state what I think. And if you agree, you agree. And if, if you don't agree, it's all good. Uh, you, you're free to think what you want and to live how you want to do what you want. Also, I was thinking that uh, no matter what side you're on, or if you're on a rich side or a poor side, that uh, you can argue factual information and both sides can be right. That's why it's good to have different discussions because just say, for example, from a man's perspective, I can argue one way versus if a woman's arguing her points, then she could also be correct. And the points that she's bringing up, it's good to have different points of views. 
everyone has problems at the end of the day under different kinds of problems. Is it better to be single? Yes, because you can learn, you can train, you, you can uh, get rid of your distractions. Uh, also, if you're in a relationship, then you can also learn from those kinds of experiences. So that's kind of an example of there is no right or wrong. The life is shades of gray. It's not black and white. Depends on the context. Always be learning. Always have an open heart, open mind. If you think you know everything, you may not. That There's more that I don't know than that I do know. Take what you could get and set your standards and tone. Sometimes it's easier to be upfront about things so that people know where you're coming from. And it might be better on team environments or if you're living with other people. This one, 15 year Android user tries to switch to iPhone, why I hated it. I think that, for example, there's different kinds of cars for different kinds of people. You use certain tools for the features that they have. Everybody likes certain things. I used to use Windows back in the days. I have a Mac now. I'll most likely try and switch to iPhone. I'm using a Samsung. We'll see if I keep it or not. But I think when you buy things from Best Buy, if it's an activatable device, there's a restocking fee. Maybe if I try to do it, I'll go through Verizon. I probably owe about a year and a half on this phone. I'll try to pay it off before I do the, the switch. Or I can try and get a used phone on Swappa.com, buy a visible or mint SIM card so that I could test it out. I bought a iPhone SE. I thought it was basic. It, it is a lower level phone, but I, in my opinion, I like the ability to customize. That's why I like the Android. The camera's better too, in my opinion. Okay, social media is killing romance. Uh, when a person, when the person you're dating is scrolling on their social media feeds, they could see other people's highlights. Most people only post up their highlights. And it's good to focus on positives because for example, the Jackie Robinson example that I was talking about the other day, he has the most strikeouts in history, but he also has the most home runs in history. Nobody remembers him for his failures. They remember him for his successes. But with that being said, that uh, you should be aware of your setbacks or your flaws. For example, first quarter, I was yo-yoing with my fitness and I had to figure out how to get out of that stump. I used tools like trackers, a scale that syncs to app. I was tracking, using a notional tracker to track my habits, um, it helped me. I was more consistent, more motivated. I had to give a speech on it for Toastmasters, which kept me accountable. I was also thinking that maybe everybody could have a YouTube because your audience will keep you accountable for these kinds of things. For example, if I'm into fitness and I let myself go, then uh, my audience could uh, try and motivate me to do better. But you should have self-love and want it for yourself. Obviously, there are certain situations where uh, you can only do so many things in a day. So you just pick the, the things that you can do in that time whatever gives you the best return on investment, that's what you're gonna do. It's kind of fake when people only look at the highlights too because that's not realistic. You, you need all of the spectrum to be able to tell a full story. That's why when you watch movies, you see the ups and the downs, it's a roller coaster. And it doesn't matter how high you get, the, the, the drop is always there. I see certain, certain uh, people that they post up highlights and then their friends see their highlights and then they could say, oh, this guy bought a Louis Vuitton for his girlfriend. And then the girl viewing it, it's like, oh, my boyfriend should do the same thing. Or uh, maybe the guy bought her a car, but you never know somebody's background finances. 
uh, you can easily buy things on credit. Don't take everything for what you see because there's a lot of things going on in the background. Even for this Mac that I have, I have to work for end of the month it will be paid off. So I, I wasn't even able to, to buy it outright. But normally you should make purchases uh, with cash unless it's a major purchase like a house or a car or something like that. I had an experience in the past where I noticed that my lady, she was going out. She was getting all dressed up. I was at home. I wasn't dating properly. She was getting dressed up. She was saying, oh, you know, I'm going to go out with a coworker. And this person normally didn't hang out with that coworker. That was one red flag. Um, company social gatherings. Keep in mind that people can lie. That they could stay out. They could go out meet up with other people. I had a dash cam in her car with GPS tracking. She disabled it. She took it down. She wiped the micro SD card so that uh, the video is not there. The location is not there. I checked out her device. She had a personal device. She also had a work phone. And I could see the location, the timeline. Sometimes they'll gaslight you and say, oh, you, you went to this location during that time. And it's like, yeah, I have proof. You can see it on my Google Maps where I am. That you want to be able to back up what you say, where you are, when you are. Uh, she said she was at her friend's place and she wasn't at that location. She was at someone else's place. I, I checked her, her phone because it had the Facebook messages on it. And you could see the chat, how long they were chatting, when they were chatting what the context was. I checked their laptop. I saw certain images on it with that person. I confronted her. She denied it. More gaslighting, more of trying to project her insecurities or her lies onto me. I told her to stop. She didn't. Told her to visit her family over the holidays. I just grabbed all my stuff and, and I moved out. Um, if you let people mess with you or, or cross your boundaries, they will. And they're not going to respect you. So have loyalty, respect, and honor for yourself. I was accountable for the things that I wasn't doing. And I was in a pretty depressed state. That's when I was in the nursing school. I wasn't working at the time. I let myself go. It was meant to be. So didn't really pay attention to her. No physical contact. Uh, basically pushed her away. It was a tough time for me. But I, I do understand why these events happen. I said that nursing school was a mistake, but it wasn't because it, it brought me to such a low point that I stripped everything away from me and I could more focus on where I wanted to go later in life. I already knew that it was over as I didn't want kids or I didn't want to buy a house in the Bay Area. This person, Duke of Hanover, he's uh, watching other people's YouTube videos and he's giving his feedback. And I thought that it was an interesting type of niche. Since he showed up in my feed, I'm assuming that we have interests. <laughs> Maybe that's a way of how you can network with other people, other creators. This morning I was walking and I was thinking YouTube it's similar to the universe, and you can ask it for things when you search or the content that you watch. And if you're searching for positive content, then it's going to show you more of what you're searching for. Also, if I'm listening to not so good things, negative topics, bad music, back in the days, I used to listen to a lot of dark music, uh, rap. When I listened to it recently, it just gave me a headache because it was super negative. Nowadays, uh, I'm normally listening to an audiobook, a podcast, or a course, something that's going to help me go in the direction that I want to go. Technically, I can go on, I can go 
to the street, right? And then I can ask somebody to show them, show me their YouTube homepage and not their YouTube channel, but I could just see, you know, the things that they're, they're interested in. Um, technically that would tell you who they are pretty much. It's not, that's probably more, more interest things that they're looking at at the time. Maybe I'll try and do that in the future. Do uh, some street interviews or something like that. Sometimes you don't know why you feel the way you feel or what you want in life. I'm 41 and I'm still figuring it out. I think when you're young, you don't have a lot of experience and you do things that you think that you should do. For example, go to university, go to school, get into a certain field, do these certain clubs. And I think that you change over time. The, the way I worked out when I was 21, 30, I'm older now. I'm not focused on pure strength. It's more trying to learn on what would work when I'm 60, essentially. The, if, if I could do push-ups, squats, sit-ups, those kinds of basic things, pull-ups, that I'd be able to maintain. If you build your muscle earlier on in life, then you can maintain it. Also keep in mind that I'm only five, six and a half. I'm not that tall. That means that my biceps, they're shorter. But if you're a taller person, your biceps could be the same mass. They would just be longer and the aesthetics, they will look different. But yeah, for sure, you'd eventually figure it out your heart how you feel in your brain, how you think they're independent and they're intelligent organs. When you were being created, your heart, it forms first before the brain. And it's an intelligent organ that they will tell you your conscious essentially. Some guy said, uh, Wes Watson, he said, uh, your heart is God speaking to you. I thought that that was an interesting quote. I'm still learning how to align my mind and my heart because just say, for example, if you break up with somebody, you know, <laughs> you should just move on, not even contact that person, but your heart still loves them because you, you loved them before. So sometimes you're always going to love them. It's like they're imprinted onto your heart. I think for my mother, because she said that she didn't want anything to do with me. I respected her wishes and I didn't contact her anymore. For her birthday was in February, Valentine's Day, for Mother's Day. I, I was uh I, I wanted to gift her something. I, I had a silver coin and a red envelope and then I made her a rose bracelet, but I couldn't send it to her because she had just said that she didn't want to see me or, or hear from me. You have to respect people's wishes and don't don't force people to stay in your lives even if they're blood. She taught me that uh, no matter what, that I, I should love myself. She couldn't love me enough. My dad couldn't love me enough. I had to do it for me. But I didn't learn this until I was older. And it influences how you act, how you feel about yourself. This is advice that maybe I would try and give to my younger self, but in all honesty, I'm not even sure if I would be able to process it. And in general, I'm pretty reserved. I don't talk a lot. But communication is one of the biggest tools that you'll have in your life. You're, a, you're your own brand. You're your own company. You sell yourself every day. When, when you go out, you project who you are, what you look like, what you say can tell people who you are, what you're focused on, your passions, those kinds of things. I had a coaching session the other day with Modern Health. I have a psychiatrist and it was to get Adderall so that I could help me focus. I only talked to her maybe three or four times a year. I personally don't think it helps me, but some people say therapy can help you. 
And in my opinion, it does not. But with that being said, when I did talk to the life coach yesterday, I resonated with him. We had a lot in common and it felt good to talk to him. Maybe that's the trick. Maybe that's what it is because if you talk to certain certain male friends or, or women, sometimes they don't want you to, to give them a solution. They just want you to talk to them so that they could kind of deload. They could get things off of their chest and process it on their own. Sometimes when you're talking to certain people, you could ask them straight up, do you want my opinion or do you just want me to listen to you? Because um, I can lend you my ear. Some Sometimes I read certain posts and some guys that they would talk to the people that they're trying to court for hours. And it's kind of ridiculous in my opinion. But you should get to know somebody on the date. You, you set the time, the date, the, the location, and then you go meet them. If they want to meet up, cool. If they don't want to meet up, then it's on to the next. Uh, uh, you, you just gather up your leads. And wow, when it's your time, be prepared. Luck is what preparedness and opportunity. Same with the doctors. I have a male doctor. Okay. So I picked him because he was a male. He just so happens to be Indian. I think that Asian culture, they have more in common. They're more relatable versus uh, maybe if I had a woman provider who's a, who's a different ethnicity or a different background, maybe she wouldn't be able to relate to me. There was a time when I went to go vote. And I was talking to this one lady. <laughs> I won't disclose her ethnicity, but I was talking to her for five minutes. And she said, do you need a ballot in a different language? And I said, no, I was born in New York. I only speak English and I can barely speak Spanish. But that's why I say, in my opinion, that if somebody sees me, they could see a foreigner. They're not going to see an American. And just say, for example, <laughs> even if I went to San Francisco, Chinatown, they'd say, you're a foreigner because you don't speak Chinese. So it's kind of, I, I'd always felt like an outsider because I, I don't look like the majority of the people in this country and I, I don't speak my native language. That's why I was more of a loner type. So same with doctors. I, I also heard that women with male doctors have a higher mortality rate and it kind of makes sense as to it, it has strong correlation because um, women know women men know men uh, their their hormones their objectives are similar i i'm not saying that uh, a male doctor wouldn't be good treating females but statistically that that's what the trend show do you think opposite sex can better relate to your challenges in life? It depends because I, I work with a lot of engineers. It doesn't matter who they are, well, what their sex is. I think working in software, it's a blessing because there's a lot of intelligent people. Everybody is collaborative. Everybody is open-minded. Most people that, that I work with, uh, they're easy to work with. That They don't have big egos. They're, for the most part, pretty logical. Um, just say, for example, for, for traits, right? I grew up without my mother. Maybe I could have some feminine traits. For example, I went to nursing school. I was a nurse aide. I worked in a restaurant and I cooked. Or my dad, he worked uh, at a, a pressing company for clothing. And normally those types of roles, they're reserved for a specific, you know. I'm not saying I agree with it, but at the end of the day, whatever makes money, whatever makes you happy, wherever your passions go, do you. To each his own, right? So comment down below uh, what your opinion is on that. I had to write a paper 
on who I am. And I couldn't talk about my relationships, my education, or other things. What was it? I had to be directly about me. But yeah, it, it's interesting. He had me write out this pie chart. What, what represents you? And he told me to divide it up into eight and I just randomly wrote down communication, helpfulness, per honor, professionalism, self-love, understanding, confidence, self-worth, drive. These are all things that I either have or I'm trying to acquire. And I would be learning throughout time how can I be a better person? I'm not perfect. I never was and I am never will be. He also gave a TED Talk. Uh, I took notes on the TED Talk. Maybe I'll share the paper. Let me know if you want to hear it of who I am. If you guys never did Toastmasters, check it out because they teach you how to do public speaking. You don't have to be the best speaker, but if you could be aware of how you sound, your pause words that you're using, your vocal range, your, your dynamic, there's a certain criteria of how you can improve if you want to. Some people say therapy and coaching works. We'll see. Always have an open mind. I'm just trying it out. I get four to five sessions a month. If you have benefits, why not? I worked for an online therapy software company back in 2016, 17, and I never used it because I never believed in it. But one of my boys, he was like, it works. But I just didn't do it at the time. And why, why not try it? Try, try it out. You'll see if you like it or not. Audiobooks and actions day to day. In my opinion, if you read self development audiobooks, that would help you a lot. Whether or not you have an open mind is another thing because even for fitness, I think that uh, we know what to do. It's, it's just we're not motivated to do it, or maybe we don't know how to do it, or there's a lot of friction involved, right? And I pretty much listened to uh, Brandon Carter of how to overcome your fear or how being more fit makes you attractive. It's kind of a laws of attraction type of thing where if you're, if you're trying to move up in life, then you will attract those kinds of things. That's, that's why I got this. I bought the aura ring because he had it and I tried it out. I didn't like it personally. Because I, I had it off more than I had it on. This, I, I bought an armband. And it'll be coming in the mail soon. I'll let you know. I was listening to one guy's YouTube video. And he said he's not going to renew his subscription. Because he learned what he needed to learn about the tracking. It teaches you. It gives you metrics. Uh, it tells you when to go to sleep, essentially. Your sleep that calories burn which is pretty important those are the two things calories burned and sleep for this there's also different kinds of products maybe you could get an apple watch i heard the apple watches are awesome they're, they're probably better than like these kinds of trackers but i don't have an iphone so many tasks get into the queue throughout life you have a lot of different tasks and a, diff a lot of different goals and you need to free up time. Sometimes if you think of the top three things that you want to do, that you would focus on those kinds of things. And just say, for example, for this year, I was focused on fitness, socializing, dancing, Spanish. But Spanish and dancing took a backseat because um, I started to, to try and get into the YouTube to try and learn how the, the business side works. I'll be focused on that for the rest of the year, but I need to focus or figure out how I want to structure my day-to-day -day so that I'm not consumed by one thing. Because for this past month, I haven't been eating really. I haven't been sleeping properly. And my workouts, they're, they're not that good, honestly. But there's about 29 days of summer. 
So we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll push to uh, about 160. I wanted to drop to 150. You guys can hold me accountable. I'll post up uh, weekly statuses. I have the withing scale. And I could show you my daily trends. I have a blood pressure cuff thermometer. I could try and get back on the notional tracking so that I could see trends. And Brandon Carter said, if you're not tracking, you're slacking. And going back to the, the 500 calorie deficit, that uh, if I'm on point for five days, but if I'm not on point for the two days, I can erase what I did for the five days. That's what it is that I, I would try and do something and then I would get frustrated. And if, if you're only if you're only giving half effort, sometimes you don't even get half of the results that you could I can overeat easily. I can eat two days worth of food in one sitting. You give me a whole pizza, it would disappear. Denzel Washington said, if you want something you never had, you have to do something you never did. And it's true that if, if you wanna see change, then everything in life is a trade-off. You're gonna sacrifice certain things. I haven't been going out as often I pretty much been a recluse for the past month. So you work on the most urgent tasks and you can take when you can and once you complete the task, it will get easier. Sometimes for monk mode, there's so many things to do and it could be mentally draining to think about it, but if you could build those habits, focus on the highest return on investments. Because in my opinion, some people say, Oh, cold shower, cold shower. It's pretty minor, in my opinion, that you're not going to get a lot of benefit from it versus if you want for a walk an hour a day. Or I got a walking treadmill. It just so happened to be broken, but I tried it out and it's something that I will purchase in the next coming months because I'm moving. I'm moving to Sunnyvale. But yeah, walking is a really powerful tool when you're trying to lose weight because there's little, little to no uh, recovery time and anybody can do it. You just go out, try to walk for five minutes, 10 minutes and then um, see where it goes. You could listen to music, audiobooks, those kinds of things. Go for a hike. If you go on meetup.com, you can meet up with different groups that do different activities if you're more social. And this takes courage to do things you normally may not have experience with. So in one of Brandon Carter's videos, he was talking about how to build confidence. And it's through courage that even if you don't have experience with certain things, you have to do them anyways. The, for dancing, for example, <laughs> I only know basics, like basic bachata. And I can't even say that I'm good because I only practice one day a week and it's not enough. If you want it to be good, you'd have to do it hours every day. But with that being said, have the courage to try different things, to meet new people. You'll figure out if you like it or not. If, if you want to continue, it's something that I would like to do later on in life. My big gripe with bachata is I do like the instructors, but the music, it's kind of negative in the sense that it's about breakups. It's kind of depressing. Even if I don't understand the Spanish lyrics, you could look them up on Google to see what the story is. It's interesting to see what songs mean, and the interpretations of it. But if I were to listen to a sad instrumental, such as somebody playing the piano or, or somebody singing in, in Spanish, the, it would depress me, it would bring me down. Sometimes if I'm angry, I would listen to a sad song so that I could shift out of the angry state and then I stop listening to the sad song and then I go back to baseline. I used to like going out for drives and my Mazda Miata, I had a convertible, listen to music. It was a pretty fun car, go-kart. I drove it across country a couple of times. I drove it from California to Alaska. I miss it, but I had to let it go for my mental health because I was getting kind of crazy driving it. So put in the work so that success is the only path to victory. 
that's something that Brandon Carter said in one of his videos, just come up with the steps that you need to be successful. And it's not a matter of if, but when, when will you be successful? Try and solve your own problems, be an asset to yourself so that you could be an asset to other people. Because if you have problems, most likely other people have those problems too. It's similar to being in a classroom that if you had a question, don't be afraid to ask. You're there and the teacher is there to help you. You're worthy of taking the time out of the class. Modern, who am I? This is my, my essay. Let me know if you want me to, to make a separate YouTube post for it. So in the past, I was very close in my adult life. I realized I had to open up more to learn from external sources. It's true because if you communicate and socialize with more people, you get to learn from their experiences. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Trust your gut feeling. If somebody is not right for you, cut them out, limit the time with them. Doesn't matter if they're your blood, your friends, your family. Sometimes uh, throughout life, those relationships, they, they die out because you either grow together or you grow apart. Sometimes certain people, they would be so loyal to people that they're not loyal to themselves in terms of romantic relationships or uh, there's a reason why I don't necessarily talk to my dad often because he's, he's a pessimist. But he has my number. If he wanted to call me, I would, I would listen to him. I would pick up. I tried to call him. I tried to email him and it didn't get through. He lives in New York. It's a three hour time difference. You could see your parents, the reflections of you. They're who you could be in the future. And just ask yourself, is that who I want to be? Or do you want to be somebody different? Obviously, the way he grew up as a child, it's different from how I grew up because I didn't grow up during the Vietnam War. I didn't have to escape a country. I didn't have to come to the United States, learn a different language. I used to speak Vietnamese when I was a kid, but uh, he stopped teaching me and I, I stopped learning. And I think that that's pretty bad because I lost culture. I lost connection. I couldn't even speak to the other Vietnamese kids in, uh, in school. And I, I felt like an outcast, an outsider. I, I felt like I was bonita, but it is what it is. That I, I could try and learn how to speak later on in life when I have time to do it. Life is like fishing. You pretty much get worms, not because you like the worms. It's because the fish like them. And that's how you bait the fish to get onto the hook. Also for fragrances, for colognes, or those kinds of things, you buy fragrances, why are you buying it? Are you buying it for yourself? Or are you buying it to attract the opposite sex? That's why when I was trying to figure out what fragrance smelled good, I asked women, what, what is your opinion on this? What do you think I should get? Obviously, that's what they like first. <laughs> There's a lot of things that men do. It's to attract women. And the same thing, there's a lot of things women do to attract men. It could be fashion. It could be your teeth. When I was young, I, I used to think, oh, uh, women, they have a lot of shoes. Why do you need 30 shoes? But different shoes serve a different function. Just say, for example, for running, running shoes specifically, they're only good for running. Uh, dancing shoes, they're good for dancing. They're not good for running. Hiking shoes, they're good for hiking. That, that's why uh, once you get these specific shoes, you're not necessarily going to want to go back to a one purpose shoe or a boot, you know? If you have a boot, it's there to protect your feet. I think that the psychology of men and women, it's not necessarily taught in school and it should be because we're pretty different. Our hormones are different. Our objectives are different. The way we learn is different. Women mature three to four years earlier than men. That's why I think that uh, you can learn from, from both kinds of people 
I'm 42 and I still think that I could learn from a 20 year old because they know things that I don't. They grew up in a different time. They have a bit different background, different story. I was listening to a podcast and they said, oh, you should start a social media presence because it's your online resume. It tells who you are. And everybody has a different background story. Just say, for example, for uh, biblical prophets, there's different prophets for different kind of people that you would resonate with your audience. And it's not necessarily me trying to find my audience that if my content helps you, cool. If it doesn't, it's all good. I think this is just helping me practice speaking. It's helping me with confidence. It's helping me put myself out there. Maybe when I'm gone, you know, the, this information will still be there. So you cast the sinker in the water and patiently wait for the fish to take the bait. It could be a reference to dating or if you're applying for jobs or, or schools, those kinds of things that uh, focus on the things that you can control, package up what you can, the best to your ability and uh, let fate do its job. You're not going to win everything. Not everything's going to go your way, but I, I do believe that things will work out. Some days you might not catch anything. Over time, you'll be successful. Sometimes I think that I could learn how to be nicer to certain people. For example, if you're training an animal and they go, they pee on a pad versus if they peed in a corner, that you could praise them when they're doing the good things. You don't necessarily want them to be in fear because if you're in fear, you're not going to be the authentic version of yourself. And if you're, if you're worried, you're self-conscious about, oh, I'm sure I'm skinny or I have bad skin. That most people, they don't even care about your insecurities because they have insecurities of their own. Just, just uh, focus on yourself. For example, my teeth. I recently did Invisalign and they dremeled between my teeth and I think that it looks, it doesn't look good when I look up close in the mirror, but again, most people, they don't care about the gap in my teeth. It's, <laughs> it's an afterthought. They don't care about it. But for sure, uh, your, your, your teeth, your smile, it can affect your confidence. It's one of the best investments that a man can do, in my opinion, or a person in general. Sometimes I think that I can learn to be nicer. It, it, is, it is possible for me to try and learn how to be patient, how to say certain things in a certain way, because I think for my personality, I'm straight up, I'm pretty blunt. My dad in general, he never cared about how you felt about yourself. He, he had just said what he thought on his mind, no filter. On one side, I could respect the authenticity of what he's saying but on the flip side it depends who your audience is and you shouldn't necessarily try and project your your beliefs and thoughts onto someone else you, you can try and tell them oh check this tracker out these are the benefits if, if you want to do it it's all good if you don't then it's fine too but the way you're talking to certain people, for example, if I was talking to a baby, a kid, or a woman, a man on the street, or my boy, it's all going to be different. You just learn. Uh, you can be authentic. You can say certain things however you want. And people, will, they will interpret it however, however they think. Always view situations from both sides and not necessarily just your side. Say, for example, you you ask somebody for their phone number and then you say, oh, do you want to go out for a drink sometime? What's your number? And then you take down their number, you text them, and maybe they text you back, maybe they don't. It is what it is, right? That you just accept what comes your way. You give the benefit of the doubt to those kinds of people. You see things from their point of view as well because... As a man, you, you would be putting yourself out there and you don't necessarily have as many leads as 
that others do, in my opinion. You have to create your value as a man. That, that's how it is. So in terms of religion, always view it from both sides. And in religion, there's good aspects about it and there's bad as aspects about it because there's a lot of good teachings. Like, for example, the Ten Commandments. I agree with most of them, but if you're saying, oh, if you don't believe in this person, then you're going to go to... It's a fear-based thing. And I also read other religious books, and they repeat the same kinds of things. Maybe it's the mother of repetition is the way to build your habits, but I, I just didn't like those kinds of things. Obviously, don't be oblivious. There's, there's consequences and outcomes for every single thing that you do, things that you say. I respect religion because I know that it could be hard to be dedicated to study, to practice the teachings daily. I wouldn't want somebody to impose their beliefs on me when I'm not open or willing to learn. Do it when you're ready, if you want. That's up to you. It's your life. You can live it however you want to live it. But just don't automatically assume that if someone's religious, that they're automatically a good person. <laughs> I was reading a statistic, and it said that uh, X amount of prisoners, they, they're Christians or they're Catholics. So that, that proves my point that just because you're religious, it, it doesn't necessarily magically make your problems go away. It doesn't magically make you the best person. But take it with a grain of salt. I'm not always an angel every day of the week. Same goes for your beliefs, your fitness, your health. What I think is my opinion. I, I live my life the way that I think is the best way for me to live. And if you have different views, it's all good. Maybe I could learn of different things to do. For example, back in the days, I used to work out in the gym. I did martial arts. Um, my friend, he said, oh, try calisthenics. And I, I tried it out. I liked it. It was pretty cool. It's a different way of, of how to work out. Hold yourself accountable. Post up some content. Maybe you'll get feedback. Maybe you won't. So I've been there, been there, done that. Uh, I've been lazy, unhealthy, in a depressed state. And it's hard to get out of that state once you're there. But eventually you guys may find the passion, the spark, the fire to, to go for the things that you want in life. Sometimes your passions find you or sometimes opportunities find you because I always wanted to learn about AI, new technologies since last year, but I wasn't taking it seriously. I, I just didn't really look into it until a month ago. But that's how it worked out. And better late than never, right? That you can lead an animal to a water hole, but you can't make the animal drink. You shouldn't force your beliefs onto another person. I live my life the best way I know how. I could represent myself by how I carry myself, how I communicate and treat other people. I like solving problems because I can learn new skills. I don't like depending on other people because I couldn't depend on my family in the past. If you're resourceful, you can figure out how to solve problems. It's a good skill to have. I learned how to do basic auto mechanics when I was in middle school. Recently, the dryer has stopped working, it stopped spinning. And I went on YouTube and I saw how the repairman fixed it. They just unbolted, unscrewed certain things. They took out the panels and then you clear out the lint because it gets hard over time. Colors. So learning how to search for answers. It's good to, to not be too dependent, but don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Colors have meanings. For example, white, it could stand for purity, cleanliness, uh, simplicity. I was in Best Buy recently and I saw a man. He, he looked like he was in good shape. He looked fit. He looked clean cut. 
in the TV section and I said, oh, I, I like navy blue because it's one of my most favorite colors. I always wanted a black and blue car <laughs> every since high school and I just got one last year. Navy stands for importance. I said, do these traits describe you? And I said, importance, confidence, power, authority, intelligence, stability, unity, and conservatism. And he kind of laughed. He didn't necessarily confirm nor deny these kinds of things. Black, it could stand for mystery, power, elegance, sophistication, sadness, anger. I normally don't wear red. I don't even know if I have a red shirt, but it's one of the most favorite colors. It's a Niners color, but I, I like Raiders colors, black and silver. Red stands for life, health, vigor, war, courage, anger, love, religious fervor, intense passion. Let me know if, what your favorite color is and if these traits represent you as a person. And also if you think that this is correct or incorrect, uh, maybe they have uh, other meanings, or maybe these meanings are incorrect. This video was on, I'll never work a nine to five job again. He was just explaining that he didn't necessarily want to work in at a nine to five and he figured out how to start his own, his own business. It, it took time. His father didn't necessarily believe in him because uh, your parents' beliefs, they may or may not be similar to your own. And, uh, sometimes when you don't, don't get the support from your family, it's friction, but it's your life. You're going to live it how you want. Shoot for your dreams. Obviously, if, if you need to work, work, because money is important. But take us uh, steps at a time, figure it out. Also for my coach, he did a TED talk and he's from India. Both of his parents were doctors. So I could imagine <laughs> how much pressure he had, that uh, he had to be successful. If both of your parents are doctors, you're from India, you better be, you better be getting straight A's and you better be successful. He had three practices. He was thinking, how can my, how can I help more people? He had couple kids in his 20s, mid-20s, he moved to Australia and he started doing his coaching business. He went to the University of New York to, to work with certain people. I think throughout time, you, you meet certain people. For example, when I was in school, I joined a fraternity because I wanted brotherhood. I wasn't close with my blood brother. An alumni came back and he asked all of us out to go out to dinner. And he said, oh, do you want to move out to California? And I said, yes, that's why I moved to California. He's more blood to, he's more of a brother than me than my blood was. I, I love him a lot. I, I would do anything for him. But these kinds of angels, these kinds of people, they would, they would open doors for you. They would believe in, he believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. And I, I appreciate it a lot. Uh, he, he was a brother to me. After 13 year, years later, he tried a, a iPhone 15 Pro. I like this guy's channel a lot, Jerry Rick. He takes things apart. One of his YouTube videos, <laughs> he bought a Cybertruck and he tested different rounds to see what kind of bullets it would prevent from coming in and I think if it's a 45 it will stop a 45 but if it's a rifle round he opened the door because he knew it was going to go in and it, it went right through the, the door but it's pretty cool that that truck can say oh, it's bulletproof I'm not sure if the glass is bulletproof but it's interesting there was one time I went to Binghamton University and you know the when you go to banks they have that bulletproof glass. <laughs> I went into this chicken place. They sold chicken and it wasn't necessarily in a good area. And they had that bulletproof glass, the, the super thick glass. It was probably a couple inches. But these videos are cool because they could teach you certain things. I learned on Android, you can schedule a text. So just say, for example, if 
your dates they want a good morning text you could just schedule a text and i put it in your phone so that it's automated or I, I wonder if you could do it every morning and then have a different text being sent technically it's not really genuine but if that's what they want also there's an ai where if you're writing something out you can change it to a professional casual straightforward a funny way it's interesting how AI will change how we communicate with each other because I think maybe I'm not the most humorous person, but if I ask Google, what is a joke? If I ask Siri, tell me a funny joke, uh, that they could, they could provide those kinds of humors. But yeah, or if a lady expects a good morning text, don't text good morning text because you should be so busy that you don't have time to do it. Whenever you communicate, make sure it has purpose and meaning. Get to the point. And don't don't be texting people back and forth all day because you should be busy on your purpose. If you're texting back and forth all day, it shows that you're not busy. Your value drops. Get to know somebody in person, not over the phone. Don't talk to somebody for hours on the phone. It'll make the real life interaction boring. Make them miss you, essentially, or ignore them. <laughs> also interesting that you could send um, casual professional text. This video was interesting. Is being fat a choice? It depends. However you want to live, you're free to do whatever you want. I've been in shape. I've been out of shape. Sometimes it's more of a, a mental aspect. Getting into shape's a lot of work. It's kind of, it reminds me that you're, you're a company and you would have to do so many different steps to, to optimize all areas of your life. And I think it's pretty hard. To, to build those habits and to be consistent. But uh, how, however you want to live, you could do it. I'm pretty sure if other people could do it, you got it too. Calories in, calories out, it's pretty simplified. I don't necessarily agree with that because if you ate a calorie, if you ate a day's worth of calories of eggs or beef versus if you're eating a day's worth of calories of chocolate, it's not the same. The hormone response is different. Also, I was thinking that one gram of protein or carbs, it's four calories versus if you're eating one gram of fat, it's nine calories. That means that if you are trying to stay within your daily caloric intake window, then protein is the way to go because it's, it's less, you know, there's less calories per gram. You could eat more of it. Also, I heard somebody say breakfast is the most important meal. Sometimes when you're trying to cut and diet, people are like, oh, you should eat. But if you know where you want to go, what you want to do, what your goals are, um, stay focused on, and focus. Sometimes people will sway you in their direction because they want you to hang out with them or they want you to feel good, right? Because you're their taste bud, essentially. But what, what I think is acceptable and what other people think is acceptable is different. You just test it out. Longest water fast I did was eight days. I haven't been able to beat that. Uh, recently I did a two day water fast. During the YouTube course, I didn't eat Monday to, to Tuesday because I was busy. I was working and I was too lazy to go get food. Imagine if you're playing a video game or you're, you're focused on work and you don't care about food. Sometimes it's easier to dry fast too. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a professional. This is just my experiences. Sometimes it's easier to dry fast. I was having problems where I would be hungry at nighttime. And that's why I don't eat breakfast because it's better to eat lunch and or dinner. Sometimes you could just eat one big meal and it would be fine. 
you'd be able to sleep you wouldn't be going to sleep on an empty diet you just figure out ways of how to optimize your goals where you want to go how do you figure out how many calories you burn you could get a tracker you could go online to see what your basal metabolic rate is i think when i went online it was about 1600 if i'm not doing anything if i just laid in a bed it would be 1600 but if i'm working out i'm doing other things it tracks you would have a more specific picture of how many calories you burn versus calories intake and you can use these kinds of sites nutrition nutrition x they have an application you can use a google spreadsheet but once you learn the kinds of foods that you like the quantity that you like eating uh, you do the work up front to do the calculations and after that you just eat the same kinds of foods if you want to have a cheat meal that week shoot for it go for it i noticed that your environment it could play a big role just say for example if you went to your friend's house or if you're at an event social event that they would have a lot of junk food and it's pretty hard to say no to those kinds of foods i normally don't drink don't smoke no drugs waste some money in my opinion okay consume 2000 so there's a difference between 2000 calories of vegetables fruits meats have essential nutrients if you're drinking beer it's an empty calorie there's nothing in it if you're eating rice it's not really nutritional dense versus if you're eating these kinds of things if you want to do keto if you want to do paleo carnivore whatever works for you whatever you want to do you could eat every other day if you wanted to as well so your age your pre-existing conditions goals habits education desire religion are all different everybody's different and you change over time as well when you're working out in a gym and you're working out with weights you're essentially damaging your muscle and that's repairing that's probably why your metabolism metabolism is normally higher after a really hard workout focus on good sleep good nutrition try and lower your stress water drink water uh, you would have to try out different systems to see what works try and habit stack your things uh, listen to audiobooks always be learning you can search on youtube to see certain content creators to see who you resonate with the plan will be different for an athlete versus if you followed the same plan you may or may not get similar results or the same results so just say for example if i train like george st pierre i'm not going to look like him because my body's different but just compare yourself to yourself don't necessarily look out to external people because you're not them you don't walk in their shoes you have no idea what's going on in the background either you're competing with the smartest engineers the richest companies for your time your attention your resources when you walk through a store when you're online social media and if you're not paying for a product you are the product that if you're giving away your time your attention and resources just say for example this person how much money is he making off of this youtube video i don't like the new youtube layout by the way they changed it and i downloaded this uBlock origin to set it back to the old way all right guys so if you know me or you're familiar with this channel you know i'm a huge android guy specifically i love the samsung galaxy phones and i've been using android phones for a really long attention. time i think the you last time i had an iphone time and was probably the iphone what 3 you get out of it? which what i think at this point was like 15 years ago and every or you can learn how to produce these kinds of things to make you money later on it's better to be a provider than a consumer in my opinion Be aware of the metrics, serving size is half bar, 
Sugar is pretty addictive. It's one of the most addictive drugs. It doesn't do a lot of damage up front, but it can be done over time. For example, type 2 diabetes, it's something that you could reverse based off of your diet, but they would rather give you insulin than give you a better solution. It's your, your body, your choice, your responsibility. When you go to the grocery store, try and stay on the outside aisles, buy real food. Buy food that doesn't have packaging on it, essentially. If it has to say this is a healthy food product, it may or may not be healthy. For example, granola bars. When you're reading nutritional labels, if you don't understand the ingredients, for example, peanut butter, if they have hydrogenated oil and all this random chemicals in it, it's not normal, right? Versus if you get natural peanut butter that just has peanuts in it, <laughs> there's a big difference. And also, if I had a granola bar and the nutritional label said, oh, it's only 100 calories, but it said for half of the bar, be aware of how they're measuring things because you could think that you're making good choices and you may or may not be. I've been fooled in the past. That's why I'm bringing it up right now. Being healthy overall can be considered a full-time job. There's a lot of variables. For example, if my sleep is off, I could retain more water. Being under stress, you're going to retain the weight. It reduces your testosterone production. The next day, sometimes if you if you live in an area where you don't get a lot of sunlight, that, that could be something that you could supplement with if you're taking a multivitamin. Let me know if you guys want me to do a video on my supplement stack. I thought to myself I had to walk for an hour or two to lose weight. I was looking at Google Timeline Analytics in April last year. I walked 123 miles, but this year I only walked 30, which is pretty bad. It's 100 miles less. Keep in mind that these tools that track you, you could use the data to analyze what you did right, what you did wrong, and try and adjust for... Uh, where you want to go, what your goals are. Um, don't think of it as something that you have to do, but if you say, I get to wake up in the morning and get to walk in sunny California, I could see the beautiful clouds, I could see people walking their dogs, I, I could say hi and smile at people. I have my abilities to go out and do it. The, if you don't use it, you lose it essentially. And working out, it strengthens the inside of your bodies, your body. It's something that you could do, in, and even in healthcare, uh, certain people, when when you're older, it's good to walk, have them walk themselves, have them do the tasks that they could do so that they could retain those abilities. Versus, if you're not letting them do those tasks, then uh, they may lose those abilities. It it will be perishable. Similar to, to communication, if you're not social, you'll lose those, those characteristics, those, uh, those talents. Same thing with martial arts or learning Spanish, coding. So there's, there's a lot to, there's so much of work to do that goes into being healthy. Um, conditions can be a trade-off. Everything in life is a trade-off. Where you focus is what you'll get. If you focus on negatives, then those kinds of people, those kinds of results will come into your life. I'm not saying if you only focus on positivities, then only good things will happen because everything is a balance. But overall trends, uh, just say for example, if I invest into an index fund, S&P 500, I expect it to be uptrending and it has been. You just look at the metrics. I've been told that I look great in terms of my physique. I think I'm average, in my opinion. You're your own avatar. You represent what you look like. If you look good, you'll feel good. And it builds your confidence. It, 
it's a confidence booster that if you're super shredded if i'm super shredded i'm gonna be happy that i will wake up early early just to look at myself in the mirror and to take my weight it's it's kind of a vanity where you want to look good for other people technically you should want to look good for yourself but there are certain things that you do to attract other people My standards and expectations that I have for myself are high. I notice that when I associate with certain people or environments that I lose control and it's hard to stop. Uh, just limit your time and your attention with these kinds of places or, or people or things. Once the floodgate is open, it's hard for me to have control. Speeding can be a drug. That's why you eliminate the source of your ability to do it. I saw people that uh, they bought certain uh, chairs or stations for racing games, but it would be expensive and I don't necessarily want to use my time trying to learn how to play a video game versus I'd rather just buy a real car and take it on the track. Eating healthy doesn't have to be expensive if you simpli simplify your foods. If you buy a lot of junk and then you, you mix in the healthy foods, it could be expensive versus if you just bought steaks or eggs or vegetables, that it could even out. But I remember when I was a kid, I, I would buy a Whopper because it's a dollar and then I would eat it with rice. The, I, I used to think it doesn't matter on the quality of food and it's because I was young. I was ignorant. My body was optim operating at an optimal level, but if I was eating a bunch of Burger King, it's not good. You just make better decisions when you go out. Or if you know you're gonna go out and eat with your, your boys, your friends, that I could not eat that day. And then when I go out, I'll just eat whatever I want. And then it'll balance out later. So make things, this makes tracking easier. When I was tracking earlier this year, I noticed that on the weekends I would overeat and then I would just be yo-yoing. It's good to track to see the trends. The scale can be all metric. If I'm, if I'm 170, I could be a shredded 170 or I could be a sloppy 170. The weight doesn't tell the whole picture, it's your body composition. You figure out how much certain foods cost the weight, how much time you need to consume it. A uh, couple benefits to not eating three meals a day is you're not wasting your time cooking, buying the food, cleaning, going to the bathroom, those kinds of things. If you just ate once a day, that's less work. You're not gonna be brushing and flossing. I have Invisalign and it's, it's a chore to have to clean your trays, to have to brush and floss. If you're doing it three or four times a week or a day, it could be annoying. Overconsumption can be a waste of time and resources and you are what you eat because what you put into your body, whether or not you're consuming things through your mind or you're eating, those make up who you are. If you don't do the maintenance on a car, it won't last a long time. Going back to a new car, if you had a new car, you didn't change the oil for 20 to 30,000 30, miles, I think that it would still run. But if you did that with a car that had two to 300,000 miles on it, I think it would break. You may have future problems. You're essentially trying to future-proof and reduce your future problems by eating higher quality foods, by taking care of yourself. Healthcare is expensive, and when you get older, your the processes go down. Your performance goes down in your body, but if you do your best, on, you could peak for, for your age and your situation. I remember buying oil and gas and I would buy the best quality of gas and oil but I wouldn't necessarily do the same thing for my food and it doesn't really make sense, it's not logical. 
So invest in yourself, your knowledge, and building healthy habits that will change over time. I'm 42 and my body isn't as efficient as it was when I was 21. You're your avatar, your challenges and how you look and how you feel. You choose these kinds of things. You choose how, who you want to interact with, who you spend your time with, what you want to learn, what you do for your work, your passions. Do your best to control what you can and let the other things go. You just do your best and, and don't worry about things that are out of your control. You can't force other people to be around you in your life. Switching from burning glucose to ketones, it can make you sick because your body, it's, it's a trigger. It's telling you to eat. Uh, if, if you could get past uh, the flu, they call it keto flu, that maybe you could feel these benefits. They say that <laughs> you have more energy or you have mental clarity. I have never felt that, but maybe it's just me. I don't know. All right. If you think of somebody who is um, binging on candy and you will have a sugar spike and a sugar drop, how can you get out of this cycle as you stop consuming the candy? Or you can eat more candy and temporarily fix the problem versus if you try and go to the root of the problem, just don't buy those kinds of things. If you gave me a bag of gummy bears or gummy worms, I'll eat the whole thing. Give me a bag of popcorn, I would eat all of it. Sometimes you have, you have to sacrifice and cut out these things so that you could get to the other side. And being in uh, a depressed state or, or being out of shape, it could be kind of a, a mental battle, a mental prison. Personally, don't buy these types of food because I know I would eat all of them. If you gave me a box of chocolates, they would disappear before the night is over. You give me a pint of ice cream, I would eat all of it. There's this ice cream, it's called Three Brothers Ice Cream Lemon Cookie. <laughs> it's so good that I, I could easily eat probably four pints of it if you let me. I know that I wouldn't be disciplined, that's why I don't waste my money on these products even though when I go over to my friend's place, I'll eat them there. Uh, you pick and choose your battles. What do you want over overall for yourself? How do you want to look? How do you want to feel? It builds confidence. People will be trying to influence you so that you spend time with them. Sometimes you got to say no, block them out. You could figure these things out for yourself, your body, your choice. It's your decision. Summer is coming up 29 days. What will I look like in 29 days? We'll see. I'll, I'll put in after. I still have to work out after this. I might record another video. We'll see on my energy level. I should just work out after this and then I'll record the second one. It's about what would I do if I could do it all over again to get into better shape. So you're free to do as you wish. What you focus on is what you'll get. The amount of work you put in, it, it tells you who you are. You could rebuild a reality to focus on healthy or unhealthy habits. When you're young, you could feel insecure about your body or how you feel or the things that you're doing. But when you get older, it, it may all be all in your head. And you learn that you just be more objective. Focus on yourself. Everything comes from within. Uh, you can learn from other people, but how you think, how you feel, it, it has to come from inside you. Most people, they're not concerned about you. They're concerned about themselves. Uh, they're more concerned about their own insecurities. Samsung, they said, based off of my weight, my BMI is 25. They said I'm overweight. Do I look overweight? I'm only five, six and a half. So what, what Samsung, think? Samsung thinks, it doesn't matter what they think. Based off of their metric, I'm overweight, but I don't think that I am. Take these metrics with a grain of salt. I kind of felt insulted when I saw it. It made me chuckle. 
Sometimes what other people think or how they feel is not a direct reflection on you because people, they'll treat you how they feel about themselves. If they're in a good mood, they'll most likely treat you good. Um, if they're in a bad mood, if they don't like themselves, they may or may not treat you correctly in a good manner. Life is shades of gray. It's not necessarily black and white. My dad, he smoked since he was 14 and he's still alive. You could choose the life that you want to live and how you want to live it. Our five-hour energy is good for you. When I was traveling across country, I thought that I need it for survival because I was getting pretty sleepy. I Sometimes you can't pull over. There's nowhere to pull over to. Sometimes there's not even a shoulder. So you do, you do what you have to do. Everything in life is a trade-off. I think my longest drive when I went up to Alaska, it took me 50 something hours, 52 hours. When I drove from the west coast to the east coast, I got to the so eastern southern side of Wyoming. It took me about a day, around a day. So Americans, statistically 40% of Americans are obese or overweight. Health costs can double or triple compared to patients who are not. In the past, I didn't know how to be healthy or have resources to be able to afford those foods. I probably didn't feel worthy of them either. That's why I was just eating Burger King. My mom also tried to teach me how to cook. She tried to teach me about nutrition because she was eating hamburgers, hot dogs, those kinds of things when you're young, but it takes a toll on you when you're older. Got health is pretty important. It could affect how you think, how you feel. Learn how you learn habits from your family, your friends, society. Just say, for example, if your parent is unhealthy, you may pick up those habits as well. Hopefully, you'll have the opportunity to to learn what is a better way to live, or maybe you had good parents and they had good habits. Being healthy or fit doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have less problems. They just change over time. You have different types of problems. For example, if you grew up well off, you'll have well off problems. If you grew up poor, then you'll have poor people problems. Some people don't have vehicles or access to healthcare. Healthcare is pretty expensive in the United States. Not everybody has a car. Not everybody has the ability to go to grocery stores or to be able to food grow afford real food. Different ethnicities are predisposed to, for example, high, high heart rate or diabetes, certain conditions, beliefs, or challenges. One example is if, if your skin is darker, your skin won't necessarily turn red and you won't have that indication, but you could feel it if it's warm. I have hyperthyroid, I have many different uh, signs, symptoms that affect how I think and operate. For example, high heart rate, fast metabolism, even drinking alcohol. Men, they have higher metabolisms, which means that um, they can process the alcohol faster. Essentially, you can have more drinks, you're, health, you're heavier. But a woman, their metabolisms are normally lower. And if they had a drink, they could stay drunk longer because their body oppressed, it breaks down the alcohol slower. If you gave me one drink, I would turn red like the, the reindeer. I'm a cheap date. Your age, your body composition can influence these kinds of factors. When I was in nursing school, I learned that babies, they're more, their body composition has more water in it, ratio wise. Since my metabolism is higher, my body breaks down the medications faster, which requires me to maybe need more doses throughout the day. It's interesting, nursing, healthcare, those kinds of things, I've always been interested in them. As soon as I eat, I have to go to the bathroom. The food doesn't necessarily have time to digest the nutrients, causing me to maybe having to eat more or Having other side effects, studies have shown that when a country adapts the standard Western diet, they call it the SAD diet, health conditions worsen. 
if you're attacking somebody or shaming them, then they're going to be on the defense. They're going to be fearful. I'm on the border about this because there was one time when I was in college, I was 185. I was eating a lot, buffet style, university. And my brother, he just said, um, look at your stomach. And then I, I said, I just ate. I was in denial. But he said, no, nah, look at your stomach. And it was the intentions that he had to make me want to change because I was letting myself go. If you praise a person or an animal when you're training them, they can properly train and be happy. It just depends on the person. Some people like to be talked in a soft manner and some people like to be talked in a direct manner. It, it's your, your preference. I like honesty, I like kindness, I like directness, but you would have to learn the game, how to communicate with people. If my name was Johnny, my life would be a hundred times easier because people would be able to remember it. People would be able to spell it. I wouldn't have to repeat my name three or four different times. I wouldn't have to come up with a nickname. People would not have to ask me to repeat. All right, so for Apple CEO, what's his name? Google CEO, what's his name? And I think that, in my opinion, it's easier to remember Apple CEO because he has an American name versus Google CEO. He doesn't. But it's interesting when uh, you ask somebody what their name is and ask them if they know what it means. All names have meanings. It's interesting to, uh, to learn about the meaning of certain people and whether or not they live up to that meaning or not. So being one, one of the five or ten Asian kids in school was tough for me. I stood out like an ugly duckling. Children learn from their parents' behaviors, whether they're good or bad. I grew up in a scarce mindset. This transferred into many areas of my adult life. I never felt comfortable at home. And into my adult life, I always wanted to be out and about. For example, I always went to the gym or martial arts studio to, to train go to the library, those kinds of things. Life has extreme spectrums. Average is more of a balance. What does that mean? Do you want to be average? Do you think that you're average? There's a quote that Bruce Lee said that he said, if I tell you if I tell you I'm good, I would be boasting. But if I said that I'm no good, I would be lying. It's kind of, I like being humble, but if, if you could be confident in certain things, then that's great too. You're unique. You may require a custom plan. This video was about P. Diddy. He was assaulting somebody in 2016. When I was growing up, I saw how my father treated his sons and how he treated women. It's something that you can learn. You have the intelligence to decide what is right and wrong. And it is wrong to do those kinds of things. He smoked, he gambled, he was a reverse role model, those kinds of things. I never wanted to get into him because I saw what they did to him. That if you're gambling away all of your money, it, it puts you in a survival state. That That's probably why he liked gambling, because he was in a survival mode. Even though you know it's bad, you're still doing it. It's because you're, you're learning these kinds of behaviors from maybe your family, maybe society, your personality. But you have to want to change and grow on your own. He has four different children with three different women. I never had kids. I never had kids because I never wanted them to grow up like me. I thought that it was pretty painful to grow up the way that I did, that I, I didn't have my mother. I felt that I would repeat the cycle, and that's why I never had kids. That I, I knew that I wouldn't be a good father. Maybe later on, if, if I learn how to be a better man, a better person, I will consider it, but right now, it's not something that I would entertain. 
how do you not work with other like-minded people? This was another question that was being asked on a podcast. Be the best version of yourself. Be an asset to yourself. Be able to provide value to somebody. Educate yourself so that you can have conversation with somebody so that you can know how to build rapport. Have hobbies, have similar interests. You can go learn how to dance, rock climbing, martial arts, go on a hike with a meetup group. Put yourself out there so that you can meet people. (laughs) Even if you're playing a video game online or if you're in an online community, you can meet people like that too. But just know that you can't force people to want to connect with you. It's pretty hard to find meaningful relationships. And in my opinion, for example, university, however many hundreds of people in my fraternity, I only talked to one, one guy, one brother. When I went to a college of San Mateo, class of 60, I only speak to one person. Community, online community, 300 plus people. I only talked to one other person on uh, going back to when I had to requalify my certification. My background, or the my friend, he was a background investigator. I met him. We were pretty tight. He helped me find my mother 10 years later. You, you never know that the people that you meet, they might be able to help you you might be able to help them in the future. Sometimes when you meet people, it's for a short time. Sometimes when you meet people, it could be for a long time. Same thing with relationships that uh, they don't last in the long run. It's better that you focus on yourself, but this is because I I had certain experiences. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. Always be authentic and genuine to yourself. Don't necessarily live someone else's life and I'm glad that I never had kids with somebody because it's not something that I want. I could I could be set you could say that I'm selfish and I am selfish. It's my life though. I I can live it however I want. Your followers and friends will find you when you least expect it. Sometimes it's a surprise who you meet. Don't expect people to associate. Don't don't associate with people who conflict with where you are, where you want to go. They're just going to make it harder for you. For example, if, if I tried to associate with my mother, I think it would be difficult because it was messing with my, my mental mind. It was making me sad at the time. And she had just said, it's too painful. I don't want to see you. And then... I didn't respond. I respected the wish. I'm, I'm not going to chase anybody in life. Doesn't matter who they are. Doesn't matter if they're your blood. That you focus on where you want to go. You work hard. And you'll be successful. All right. Let me know if uh, I could answer any other questions. Let me know what content you guys are interested in. If you guys have feedback, let me know. I'd, I'd love to, to chat, to learn from you. And I hope you have a great day. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below. Peace.